Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, a massive welcome. I'm Katie. This is my YouTube channel where I talk about dogs, lifestyle. I live with my husband Ben and our two dogs Oscar and Peppy, both Pomeranians. Peppy we've had since a puppy and Oscar is a rescue from Cyprus but you can see loads more about them in other videos. I don't want you to be put off by the title of this video. If you're one of my older audience then don't think that this video isn't for you. If you are looking to get a dog or a Pomeranian or a puppy then I think this video might really really help you. Um, so first of all I want to tell you a little story and I've got my phone here I hope that's okay I always like to write little notes down on my phone. So once upon a time there was a little girl who was obsessed with dogs, so obsessed that she knew pretty much every single dog breed by name, by character, everything. Her family had previously had a black Labrador, his name was Boot, um, but sadly due to a careless incident where a careless human threw a chicken bone into a hedge, um, the dog sadly ate the chicken bone and passed away shortly after well before its time. Quite a few years later and the little girl had an accumulation of chickens but knew that this didn't fulfil her, she knew she wanted a dog. Every Christmas the little girl would put a box with a bowl of water and a blanket at the end of her bed and ask Father Christmas for a puppy. Now she pleaded with her parents for many many years and after years of her parents saying no she'd gone to Father Christmas as her last option. One year after Christmas breakfast, and no puppy from the man dressed in red, her parents told her and her siblings to pull on their wellies and coats and come outside to go down to the stables. So she did. Now, in a warm stable filled with hay were two tiny Springer Spaniel puppies, both wagging their tails looking up at her. Now, that little girl was obviously me, um, and the dogs were our first dogs, Rani and Rogan. They went on to have two litters of puppies, one litter each, they were both girls, they were actually sisters from the same litter, and they both went on to have puppies themselves. Now, our dogs were working dogs, so that meant they went on shoots with my dad, they were gun dog trained, uh, so they knew how to react when obviously a gun was fired and they knew how to retrieve birds um, softly and I um, managed to convince my parents to let me have one of the puppies as my own and her name was Kia. Sadly she's no longer with us, um, she passed away a few years ago now but she was just the best dog so I thought I would share a few little points on how I managed to convince them to let me have one. Um, we actually ended up with four dogs at once in the end, so I have a little bit of experience in persuasion. Obviously it didn't work for many, many years, but they did eventually give in. What I would recommend is if you don't have a pad and paper with you right now, go and get one and come back and finish watching the video because I think some of the things that I mentioned, it would be good for you to write down. Yeah, some of these points you're basically going to be attempting to use to prove to your parents that you are committed and worthy of having a dog or a puppy. Now, saying that, my top advice is to compile a presentation. Now, this sounds like a lot of work, it is, but sadly, a dog is also a lot of work, it's a lot of commitment, so if you can show your parents or show yourself that you can make this commitment to doing the research and to getting everything ready and waiting, then you know you're kind of at that stage where a dog might be the right choice for you. In terms of the actual presentation, make sure that you find a time that both your parents or your guardian um, or even your partner, whoever you're trying to convince, find a time when they are free, when they aren't looking at um, screens, so the TV or phones or anything, Get them to sit down in a room and actually present this to them because it shows so much more commitment and so much more, especially if you're younger, this shows so much maturity to stand up in front of your parents and say, listen, we've scheduled this time, I've made this presentation, 
and I really, really want you to listen to what I'm saying because it's very important and it means a lot to me. And I promise you they'll take you far more seriously. First of all, one thing that is super key is persistence. Sadly, that's it. Some parents may say no, 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 but eventually if you keep asking and you keep showing them that you are committed and you are ready to do this, then they should eventually give in. I mean, I say should. Obviously, once you've gone through all these points, then you will understand what it is to look at whether or not a dog is right for you as well. Um, but we'll get on to that. Is a dog right for me and my family? Timing is everything when you are looking to get a dog. And you need to be aware that obviously a dog can live for up to 20 years. Now, 20 years is a long time for a dog to live, but it can happen. So you need to make sure that you are prepared to make that commitment for 20 years. What are you gonna be doing in 10 years? Are you still gonna be able to care for the dog? Are you still gonna be around with your family and able to look after it? Will the dog come with you? Will the dog stay with your family? These are all things you need to consider and need to look into. So with your presentation, you need to state to your parents your 20 year plan essentially, and the lifespan of your dog. Bearing in mind obviously that when a dog is older, it's elderly, it's less mobile, it can't do as much as it can when it is young. On timing as well, the timing may not be right for you and your family. If your family are about to go on a, I don't know, a massive long trip across the world, then amazing, I'm very jealous. But also, that's not really fair to take a dog on. And also there are so many different rules and regulations throughout the world that you have to do quarantines and um, the dog has to go under so many injections and things like that to make sure that it's okay to travel from country to country. So if something like that is going to happen, it is possible. It's just a lot more hard work. Same if you go on a lot of long haul holidays. What's going to happen to the dog when you are away? These are all things to consider. Is Can the dog go and stay with family? Do you have, I don't know, grandparents, aunts and uncles, cousins, friends that the dog could be left with? Or will the dog need to go into kennels? Because obviously kennels is an expense as well that you would have to consider. Your time is also a huge commitment to getting a dog. Now, this is something I think people overlook sometimes that you need to be able to have the time to be able to look after the dog, train the dog, everything. Um, dogs also need at least one opportunity a day to run free off the lead. So that could be, I don't know, in a big garden, in a park, something where the dog can actually be free and not restrained by a lead or stuck in the house. They need to be able to get up to full speed at least once a day because otherwise, can you imagine if you weren't allowed to, I don't know, be out and be free? It's not the nicest feeling. So um, yeah, very important for a dog. Different breeds and sizes of dogs require different amounts of exercise. For instance, Oscar is seven kilograms. Um, he goes on a long walk every morning with Ben. Ben takes him on a long walk and that's perfect for him. Whereas Peppy comes up and sleeps on the bed. But Peppy will also need a few walks throughout the day to stretch her legs, get out the house. We also have a garden, so they play in the garden, but that's not enough. A dog can't just be cooped up in a house in a garden all day. They do need to get outside the house because it's great for them to be able to sniff things, communicate with other dogs and socialize is so important. You also need to ask yourself whether or not you can commit to taking care of a dog. So for instance, if you're at school or university, um, or even if you work, the dog's gonna require exercise before and after work. So you can't come in and go, oh, I'm too tired to walk the dog, because the dog is gonna need to go outside, it's gonna need to do its business, um, and you just have to be there making that commitment to the dog. Typically, you can leave a dog for about four or five hours a day. Personally, I wouldn't recommend any longer than that, although we have on occasion left Peppy for sure. I'm not sure if we've left Oscar for very long, but we've definitely left Peppy for maybe about eight to 10 hours, but she is very good. She literally just falls asleep when we go out. Um, and isn't too bothered, but you could not be doing that every single day because it's just not fair on the dog. So something practical you can do is draw up a timetable. So this will demonstrate to whoever you're trying to convince to get the dog um, that you've really looked into the timings and you understand 
the time constraints associated with having dog ownership. Um, so, for instance, I've jotted down a very, very brief timetable. So, for instance, if you're at school, this one might apply. 6am, wake up, walk the dog. 6.30am, feed the dog. 6.40am, get ready for the day. 7am, you have breakfast. 7.15, play with the dog slash practice some training, sit, stay, whatever. 7.30, let the dog out before heading out for the day. So depending on whatever time that you leave the house, whether it's, I don't know, eight o'clock or whatever, obviously you change those timings. Then you also need to schedule who will let the dog out during the day because a dog cannot hold its bladder all day. So someone is gonna have to, either you come home during lunchtime um, or I don't know if your parents are home, grandparents, whoever, needs to be home to be able to take the dog out. You can also organize um, particular services that come over and will take your dog for a walk and things like that. So that's also something to look into, but a full timetable, you'll need to do a Monday to Sunday timetable and every single day with all the times that you're awake and will be looking after the dog, all those times need to be factored in um, because the dog doesn't just go away just because you've got school. Uh, and it won't just sit there and watch TV. Dogs need to be stimulated as well, else they get bored, they can start chewing things. So definitely something to consider is a full timetable. Then you can really let your parents or whoever know that you've really, really thought about it. And obviously the schedule is needed for the weekends too, because even if you're home, you may have sports commitments, you may have parties to go to, you may want to go out for lunch or Whatever's going to happen, you need to factor in what's going to happen to the dog. Are you going to go on a long family walk or something like that? Moving on to cost. Can my family afford a dog or puppy? Don't be under any illusion that a dog is cheap because they are not. There are so many costs involved in having a dog. Right now, dogs are super expensive in the UK especially. There are so many options to rehome beautiful dogs. You can get dogs from abroad, say Cyprus and places like that, that need rehoming. Um, in the UK, I know we're doing quite well at the moment and there aren't too many dogs, but yeah, definitely look at rehoming a dog or a puppy from abroad. You can still find puppies um, from places like Wild at Heart Foundation. Um, I'll, I'll leave a few rescue places down below that you can, in the description box down below, that you can have a look at. Um, but the actual cost of the dog can be super expensive. And I think the initial cost of a Pomeranian can be anything from £1,000 up to £6,000, £10,000. So you really need to think about that and where that money is going to come from. Are you going to pay for that or are your parents or somebody else going to pay for that? You need to think about that cost and if you are going to pay for it, can you get a weekend job? Can you do some work after school, after university or can you um, maybe do some odd jobs around the house to try and make the money, make some pocket money um, and yeah, basically add to the cost of the dog. Then you have vet's bills. So a monthly, pay a monthly payment plan for uh, Peppy, I think we did, is about 20 pounds or each of our dogs are about 20 pounds per dog um, per month. So that's £240 a year. Insurance, £40 a month per dog. So that's £480 a year. Food, £10 a week per dog. So £500 a year. Extras, you've got to think about uh, toys, toothpaste for dogs. I know that sounds crazy, but dogs need their teeth brushed. So you need to think about costs like that. Their toys, um, leads, harnesses and gadgets. So you're going to need a camera to keep an eye on the dog when you go out. Do you need to get a new dog bed? All these sorts of things. So let's factor in about £100 a year for that. Total, you're already looking at about £1,320 per dog per year. So that's quite a lot of money and you need to figure out where that's going to come from. On top of that, if you are going to go away and you are going to go on holiday or something, are you going to have to pay for kennels? Um, because again, that's going to be another cost on top. Are you going to need to pay for a dog walker because you are maybe out more than you think that you might be? Um, again, these are all costs and what I would do is if you are going to do a presentation is work out the cost, 
do some research and I'm, I'll come to research again in a bit but have a look at these costs work out what it would be in your area because also things like insurance change based on where you live so when we were living in London our insurance was a lot more expensive than it is down here all things you need to look at then we come on to space can a dog fit into my home this may sound really silly but you really need to think about it for instance if you live in a one bed flat is a great dane really going to be the best housemate probably not and you're probably going to get on top of each other um but also in the same breath is your house filled with priceless pieces of art that are just going to get ruined if you have a tiny puppy that wants to chew everything do you have a garden is your garden secure? Do you have, say for instance, six foot fences where the dog can't get under, the dog can't squeeze out through the gate, you don't live on a main road, the dog's not gonna run out into the road? Again, all things to consider. If there are things that maybe you think, oh, my garden isn't secure, there is a hole in the fence, could you put that into your presentation as well and say, we need to fix that hole in the fence before we got a dog because otherwise it would just be heartbreaking if something happened to the dog. Also to consider is where will the dog sleep, because dogs need a designated space for themselves. Ours are in the kitchen and they have their beds and they're tucked behind the kitchen table and it's a perfect space for them, they know that's their little space. We also have a um, baby gate on the kitchen door, so at night we just shut them in the kitchen and that's their space. Again, if we have people over or something like that, because we're still training Oscar, he has a few issues that have come with him. Um, we can shut him in the kitchen until he's calmed down and he's ready to meet guests and things like that. So really think about, is there space in the home for the dog and where will that space be? And maybe put in a few suggestions in your presentation as to what that would look like, um, where the bed would be, where the water bowl would be so that it's not getting knocked over. It's not in a busy foot traffic space. It's in a space where the dog can take itself off if it's all getting a bit too much and have a bit of a rest. You also need to think about whether or not the dog will be allowed on furniture. So beds and uh, sofas. Our dogs are both allowed on the sofa. We only let Peppy on the bed, however, because we've had a few incidences where Oscar likes to pee on the bed, so he's no longer allowed on it. But that's fine, he has his own. We've got another little, um, this is our master bedroom. We've got a little ottoman and that's Oscar's space. So he's still at the same level as Peppy, but he just isn't allowed on the physical bed. And that's fine, that works for us. Your family may not like animals on the bed and that's fine. You just have to work out what's right for you and your family. The last thing in the space to consider is, do you live near a green space or a park where you can walk the dog? Because obviously if you're having to get in the car every single day, it's not ideal to be taking the dog to that or if the dog's just on the lead all the time that's not great if you have a green space or a park nearby where the dog can be let off the lead then that is perfect next is upset so have you factored in any potential upset to the home for instance is anyone allergic to dogs would you have to look at a certain dog breed for instance a lot of people think that um, it's the dog's fur that causes people to be allergic it's not it's the dander within the fur and some dogs produce less dander than others so it may be worth looking into a certain breed or is more hypoallergenic so wouldn't create as many reactions um, secondly do you currently have pets already that would be upset by a potential puppy or a dog coming into the home do you have a cat, for instance, or I don't know, a guinea pig or a house rabbit or something? Because all these points you need to factor in and consider. Also, in terms of upset, are there young children in the home that are potentially not going to know how to handle a small dog like a Pomeranian or even a large dog? Um, yeah, maybe have a look into all these different factors and see if there are any hazards and flag them up as a caution. Okay, then we come on to possibly the most important, research. So, you really, really, really need to do your research. If you want a particular dog breed, then you need to really understand that breed. You need to give yourself a full presentation. And this is the same, if, you're, if you are um, younger, if you're at school or university and you're looking to get a dog, then you need to be doing your research on the breed that you want. 
if you're an adult and you are fully responsible for all your own decisions, you should be doing the same research. So you need to find out everything there is to know about your dog breed. And I assume you've come here because you like Pomeranians. I would recommend you watch all my fact videos on Pomeranians. You watch all my training videos on Pomeranians. Um, I know that's a shameless self plug, but that really, really should help give you as much information on the breed as possible. And I've really put in all my knowledge into those videos. Obviously I'm no expert and I say that every single time, but I love Pomeranians and I love dogs and I've put a, a lot of effort into those videos. So um, I hope they are useful to you. Secondly, look into reputable breeders. If you're not gonna get a rescue, have a look into reputable breeders. And I think if you're in America, there's the AKC, which is the American Kennel Club. And over here in the UK, we have the Kennel Club. So on these websites, they will have lists of reputable breeders that you can go to for every single dog breed. And if you're looking at Pomeranians, have a look at all the different people, have a look at their values, have a look at their websites, maybe even give them a call and see, obviously with your bill player's permission, <laughs> um, yeah, give these breeders a call to see if they are having any litters of puppies, how much their litters of puppies cost, what um, what their puppies usually look like, how big the dogs are, all these kind of things will really, really help. Um, and again, it'll show that you've really, really worked hard into looking at what you want um, and you know what you're talking about when the time comes. Can you take on a rescue dog? Could that be an option for your family? Obviously there's so many puppies being born every single day, but we have a huge problem globally with the overbreeding and overpopulation of dogs. There is a massive problem with puppy farming, things like that. So really do your research as to where your puppy or your dog might come from. If you can get a rescue, amazing. If not, I understand that that's not for everybody. So if you are going to go for a puppy, then try and find a, rebu a reputable breeder or if, if you have family friends or something like that that is breeding, then talk to them about their puppies as well. Um, it's always best to go with somebody recommended or someone that you know rather than someone random. And obviously with that, I've got loads of videos um, with advice on how to not get duped by a puppy farm and things like that. So if I can, I'll put one of those videos up on the card here. Otherwise, um, have a look in my Pomeranian videos and you will find something there. Finally, my last point on research is know your basic training. So with that, I mean, learn to teach a dog how to sit. Watch a few videos now that teach you how to teach a dog to sit, how to get them to lie down, things like that. I actually have a few basic training videos as well um, in my uh, Pomeranian playlist. So if you go and have a look at that, then they should be really, really helpful. Obviously teaching any dog to sit is exactly the same, any dog to lie down, all these sorts of things are very, very similar. But if you know already how you can do this, then if your parents turn around and say, well, you don't know the first thing about dogs. How do you get a dog to sit? You can say, actually, I do. I know exactly how to get a dog to sit. So all these things hopefully will help you convince your guardian, your parents, whoever, to let you get a puppy. I wish you so much luck because honestly, dogs are just the best, most amazing things and we genuinely do not deserve them on this planet. I really hope this video has helped you to create some sort of presentation or some sort of convincing to whoever it is you need to convince that it's the right thing for you to get a dog. I really hope it works. Do let me know in the comments down below if it does. And yeah, I think that's it for now, but I will see you in my next video. If you've enjoyed this one, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and hit the subscribe button as well as the notifications bell so you're notified every time I post a new video which is typically on Thursdays and Sundays and I will see you in the next video. Bye!